Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem throttle. This is another pretty practical JavaScript problem. Well, at least conceptually, we basically want to write a wrapper function once again, like pretty much all of these challenges that throttles the given function that we're going to pass as a parameter for this many seconds. Now it technically doesn't work like a real throttle. And I'll explain what I mean when we look at the example right now. Now, in this case, we're just throttling the log function and we're doing it for a hundred seconds. So when we call throttle the first time, it works as expected. It works as usual. But when we call it the second time, it will not execute immediately. It will execute after a hundred millisecond delay because that's the delay that we passed into our throttle wrapper. Now, usually how throttling works is if you call a function if it is currently throttled, like for the next 100 milliseconds after it's first called, it's throttled, then the subsequent calls should normally do not execute actually. And throttling is just another word for rate limiting for the most part, at least. And in this case, we want to limit the function to be called at most in a 100 millisecond window. This problem is slightly different because I guess they're trying to test our asynchronous programming skills. And we actually want to schedule the subsequent call. So yes, we won't execute this immediately. We will rate limit it, but we will sort of queue it to execute after that time has elapsed. So basically this line is guaranteed to execute at some point in the future. It won't get completely rate limited, but if we call this maybe a second time and just to make it more clear, let me, let's say I pass in log two as the parameter. So now what will happen? Let me get rid of this comment because this one is actually going to be the one that's logged. So we know immediately after this is called, our logger is rate limited. So this one technically won't execute immediately. Normally this would execute after hundred milliseconds, but then immediately this one gets called. So this one sort of cancels the previous one that is being scheduled. We can only have one of these scheduled at a time. An alternative implementation for this would be this one ends up getting logged at T equals hundred milliseconds milliseconds. And this one ends up getting logged at 200 milliseconds. In that case, we would sort of need an execution queue, some kind of FIFO data structure. I think we can actually just use promises as well. But thankfully, in this case, we don't need to do that. We only want one of these to be queued at a time. And I actually think this implementation is actually going to be uh, more difficult than the queue implementation. But a quick example of throttling that is different from what we're going to be implementing here is just try to submit on leak code multiple times really quickly. I'm going to submit once. We got wrong answer. I'm going to submit again. I'm going to submit again. And it says you have attempted to run your code too soon. So we can't do that right now. And notice how it didn't schedule this to be executed after like 100 milliseconds or whatever. It literally just blocked us from being executed. So that's how that's different from what we are implementing today. But now let's actually get into it. So normally we just want to call the given function uh, with the given args that we are passed in. And it should be that simple. I don't even think we need to return anything in this case. So this would work for the first time we call our function, but the next time it would of course call it again, but that's not what we want to do. So we need some kind of detection to check. Should we call it immediately? Is there currently maybe nothing uh, like we're currently not throttled? We can call it immediately, but if we cannot call it immediately, then we have to just sort of wait. Well, we can, and for that, we'll use another variable and I'm gonna call it is throttled. Initially, I'm just gonna set it to false because initially we are not throttled, but the first time the function executes, we are throttled. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to true then. And then we can use this as our condition. And I'm actually gonna put is throttled here. And when we are throttled, we actually don't want to execute this. So what I'm gonna do is actually move this down here now. And the waiting phase is actually gonna uh, happen when we are throttled. Now, when we do wait, we want to schedule the next execution sort of. But if we call a set time out here, the problem with that is, yeah, we could put like a call back here and say, okay, call this FN, you know, with whatever arguments after T seconds. And we could even get the ID of this so that we could cancel like the other ones if we ended up calling this multiple times while it's throttled. But the problem is we wouldn't be able to get a precise measurement of the time. We don't want to have to restart the set timeout with the 100 milliseconds if the function gets called multiple times while it's throttled. So this is not quite going to work. So for now, I'm going to leave that blank and I'm actually going to schedule a set timeout over here. At the very least we could do is have some kind of callback, which will do this. 
set is throttled to false after t seconds. So at the very least, now we have some Boolean to tell us precisely whether we are, we are throttled or not. The problem though is, if we are throttled and we scheduled something to execute, we want it to execute as soon as the throttled goes from true to false. So how can we do that? Well, probably we're gonna need to expand upon this callback. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this and just uh, pass in helper here, which we have yet to define. I'm gonna define that down here, calling it helper. It's not gonna take any parameters for now, but it is going to do what it was previously doing and update is throttled to false once the time elapses. What else would we want to do here? Well, here we want to be able to know if there was something scheduled. Is there something scheduled? And where would we schedule something? Probably somewhere over here. If there is something scheduled, then we probably want to call the FN with whatever arguments were scheduled. This is kind of a hint that we should probably here save the arguments if we are throttled in maybe a variable, which I'm going to call next args. Initially, it's going to be undefined. This is the same as setting this to explicitly be undefined. So I guess I'll do that, even though this is kind of redundant. But here now, we can go ahead and just say next args is going to be the args that were passed in. And yes, we are waiting here because we know that the scheduled set timeout will execute and that's where we're going to end up executing the future call if we're currently throttled. And so here for FN, what would we pass in? Probably those next args that we did save if something was scheduled. But more importantly, how do we know if something was scheduled or not? Probably our next arg. So if it's undefined, clearly we do not have anything scheduled and we would execute the else block. But if this is evaluates to a truthy value, then we do want to call FN. And if we end up calling FN, then we do end up throttling ourselves once again. So then we have to set is throttled to true. And not only that, but then we have to once again set a timeout. We can update the is throttled value when however many T seconds elapses. We do still have access to T even though it's defined or passed all the way up here. And what do we want to do? Well, we would want to once again clear is throttled and possibly execute the function again if next args is non-null. So this is a good use for recursion. That's kind of why we wrapped this in a helper function. So this code over here is starting to look pretty similar to this code over here and you might get the idea to try to refactor this but I'll mention that it's not going to be easy and the reason is that these are actually very different because this is being called when the function is not throttled. These next args were passed in when the function was throttled so we saved them in a separate variable so these are actually more different than they appear. Now what would we want to do in the else case once the timeout expires and we do not have any next args, well, probably the only thing we would wanna do is set is throttled to false. So actually, we can just go ahead and move that in here because there's no point in putting this up over here if we end up executing the if statement and just setting it back to true once again. So now let's clean this up a tad bit. And there is a bug here, can you catch it? Well, here when we're scheduling the set timeout, suppose the function never ended up getting called again. What would the set timeout helper end up executing? Well, it would start back up over here. It would check if next args is still a truthy value and it would still execute to true. Why is that? Because we never cleared the next args. We don't want this to just keep executing infinitely and that's what it would do currently. We'd have an infinite loop, an infinite uh, set timeout loop where it would call the helper, next args would be true, it would schedule it again, it would just keep end up executing this if statement and scheduling a future execution. So when we end up calling it, let's go ahead and also set next args equal to uh, undefined again, let's say. Or you could do null as well. Probably null is a bit more explicit, so let's go ahead and actually do that. So that is the entire code. These problems are pretty tricky, but maybe you're starting to get the hang of it, or at least it's getting a little bit easier to understand. So let's run this code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.